it. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it's no secret. We all know that children have vivid imaginations. I mean, it's all over the place. You remember? As a matter of fact, when I was seven years old, I felt like I had more of an imagination than most of my friends because I had the greatest two parents in the world. My mom would always say that your imagination are your dreams and your dreams are your gift from God and they're your treasure. Never let anybody steal them from you. And my father, who was military and very, very, let's just say disciplined, he would always say, your dreams are your blueprint to your future. Guard them, because whatever you can dream about, you can bring about. And I bought it <laughs> as a kid. And when I was seven years old, for a seven-year-old kid in those days, in the olden days, the most fantastic thing was Superman, the adventures of Superman. I mean, bullets would bounce off of his chest. He could leap tall buildings on a single bound faster than a speeding bullet, all of that stuff. And I was that kid that would put a towel around my neck and run around jumping off, of, off the roof and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And when Halloween came around, my mom asked me, she said, well, what do you want to be for Halloween? And I said, well, Superman, of course. Now, we didn't have any money, but my mom loved to sew. She had a sewing machine, so she went out and got some material and made me a homemade Superman outfit. Days before Halloween, and I wore it every day. I wore it out. <laughs> and on Halloween day, I wore it to school, like all the other kids. And they showed up with their store-bought costumes and their masks and all of those things. And I showed up, and I walked up proud with my homemade Superman outfit. And they laughed at me. Everywhere I went, they laughed at me. But they didn't laugh at me because my outfit was made from home. They laughed at me because they said, you can't be Superman. Superman's white. And this was the white kids that were saying this. But I didn't let it bother me because I had the greatest parents in the world who taught me. And I decided right then and there, I'm going to be the very first black Superman. <laughs> Thank you. And I carried, I carried that ideology all the way through grade school and high school. And even though I wasn't that great a student, my dreams were I wanted to be an artist. And I learned how to draw and to sculpt and to paint. And I wanted to be a musician. Those were my dreams. And I did so well, I graduated a year early from, from high school. I, I graduated at 17 years old. And I won a scholarship for the very first Walt Disney School of Arts in Valencia, California. And in between there, I was ecstatic because my dream was coming true. And my dad said, if I worked hard at it, I could make it happen. And I did. And in one night, I was riding my motorcycle in a place called Oildale in Bakersfield, California. And the chain came off of the sprocket. And I pulled into this gas station. It was closed down. To, and I took out my tools and I was working on the bike and a pickup truck pulled up and three grown men got out and tried to take my life because of the color of my skin. They held me and each time they punched me or kicked me, something broke inside and I felt it. And it wasn't so much the things that they did to me, it was the things that they said about my worth, about what was going to happen to me and what the world thought of me. And in that moment, they stole my dreams. And my life did a downward spiral. And by the time I was 19 years old, I was homeless, living in a cardboard box behind an old drive-in theater in Lancaster, California. I was just a kid. And I hated them for what they did. And I could not stop thinking the things that they said to me over and over and over again. And then somebody that I didn't know, a kind person, gave me a book and insisted I read the book. And the book was called Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, you know the book, you read the book. But I was desperate, I didn't just read the book like most people, I read the book and I did what the book said. But I focused on the point that said think because that was the problem was I just could not stop thinking about that. And my life started to change slowly. I started to change how I started to think about myself and, all, and, and, and about other people and, and what the world was gonna do. 
And slowly I started to change. And when I went back to the man that gave me the book to thank him, I said, thank you for what you've done. You've changed my life. What can I do to you? What can I do for you? How, how can I repay you? Because that's the way I was raised. He said, Joseph, how you repay me is you do the same thing that I've done for you, for as many people as you possibly can for the rest of your life. And that's why I'm on this stage right now. And so I thought, okay, well, in order to do that, I need to learn more about people. So I started studying psychology. And I got a formal education. I started learning in all of the disciplines, neurolinguistic programming, hypnotherapy, anything you could imagine, all of the stuff. And I started to learn because I first started to feel like, well, there's got to be a quicker way. And I opened a practice in Los Angeles several years ago, you know, freak city. <laughs> and I got really, really good at helping people get over fears and phobias and emotional challenges and traumas that happened to them in their life. And one of the things that I realized was that trauma, and I want you to remember this, traumas, yeah, there'll be a few of them, several of them in all of our lives, and downtimes and things that happen to us, they only happen once, but the memory lives on where? Inside of our heads, over and over again. And so I realized that, well, wait a minute, there are methodologies, there's things that I call neuroencoding of a way to help people quickly change what goes on here because it goes like this. How we think will determine what we feel, and what we feel will determine what we do, and what we do will determine what we have. It is that simple. But as you might imagine, I'm a bit unorthodox in the way that I do things. You see, if you got a fear of dogs and you come into my office, take a guess what's going to be in my office. There's going to be a dog. And within that session, that half hour session or 45 minutes, you're not only going to hold that dog and laugh with that dog, but I'm going to give you something after you leave that you can do that is going to fortify that so you get stronger and stronger. And so I got really, really good at that in doing that. And with your permission, I would love to share something with you, a tool with you that you could use to do that. Because listen, it crossed my mind that maybe one or two of you out there have not achieved all of your dreams and goals either. Matter of fact, raise your hand if any of these things have affected your life or maybe still do. Procrastination, hesitation, fear of failure, fear of success, self-doubt, self-loathing, imposter syndrome, and fear of failure, and fear of rejection. If you're not raising your hand, you need to come see me about that lying issue you got, okay? <laughs> It all does. But we think that those are the thieves of our dream, and they're not. The thieves of our dream are our own thoughts. That six inches of real estate that you all own between your ears, those are the thieves of our dreams. Yak, 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 yak. You can't do this. You can't do this. Something's wrong with you. Or what happened? That's what goes on. And so, are you down for learning this? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, that sucked. Yes or no? Yes. Fabulous. Okay, then you're going to have to play along, all right? I'm going to have you do something because I heard somebody, some, somebody say something earlier, and that is that knowledge is not power, and it's not. Knowledge is only potential power. Your cell phone has a bunch of knowledge in it, but unless you turn it on, it's not going to work. It's not going to be utilized. And so I'm going to ask you to do something. But before I do, I'm going to share with you something. It is a tool that you're going to be able to use that you can change how you think. Because remember, it's think, feel, do, have. And so, tell me if you've done something like this. You're sitting in your house, and you're going, I got to go in the kitchen and go get an ink pen or whatever it is in the kitchen. And you stand up, and you go into the kitchen, and all of a sudden you're standing in the kitchen going, what the hell did I come in here for? <laughs> Raise your hand if that's happened to you. All of us. Now, understand this. There's some magic in that. And the magic is in this. It's something that we call a pattern interrupt. And that is this. When you're sitting there, you're in a pattern of thinking. Remember, think. You're thinking about the pencil or the pen or whatever it is, and you know what you're going to do. Your body is in that way. And as soon as you stand up, three important things happen. Number one, you're no longer there, and you're no longer thinking that. Number two, you create what's called a scotoma or a blank spot in your brain. And then number three, that blank spot it's like a vacuum. And what does nature always want to do to a vacuum? It always wants to fill it up. So that's your opportunity to fill it up. So let's try this out. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think. Now, you got to play along. You willing to do it? You're down for it? Are you sure? Okay. 
I want you to think of something right now that causes you to feel upset or pissed off or frustrated or whatever. Think about what it is. Real hard, think about it. April 15th is getting ready to come up here soon, okay? <laughs> Quit laughing, okay? Think about something that causes you. Notice, and I want you to get real with this. Notice where you feel it. You feel it in your stomach, and your heart. Where do you feel it? Notice how that feels. Now, all I want you to do is real quickly stand up. Just stand up. Everybody stand up quickly. Stand up. And find a spot on the ceiling and look up and put a big smile on your face. Keep that smile on your face. Breathe deeply, throw your shoulders back, breathe deeply. Keep that smile on your face. And without changing that smile or how you're breathing, get as depressed as you were a second ago. <laughs> Why are you laughing, you freaks? <laughs> All right, look up here for a second. You're laughing because you can't do it. Your body, you did what I said. You created what was called a pattern. You interrupted your pattern. Now, here's all I want you to do. Throw your hand up here like this and reach over and pat yourself on the back <laughs> and say these words. I, I am, am amazing. amazing. And then go like this. <laughs> do it. All right? Now, give yourselves a hand and have a seat. <laughs> and understand what just happened. You just took yourself out of being unresourceful. So I'm gonna ask you to do three things. Number one, I want you to do this three times a day for the next 10 days. Use your cell phone to remind you, tell Siri to remind me to shake my ass or do whatever in, you know, three times a day. Because here's what will happen, I call it human physics. Whatever you repeat over and over again, you'll get good at it. And guess what you just got good at? Snapping yourself out of it. Because hard, listen, there's no fearless people. Fear is gonna show up. But there are people who fear less in, in quantity and the amount of time that they spend there. The second thing that I want you to do is to be kind to yourself. Be kinder to yourself because rehearsing that, you will start to love yourself more and that is the name of the game. The third thing that I want you to do, actually there's four things I want you to do. The third thing I want you to do is to be kind to one another as well. The last thing is this. Remember this. Life is always exactly what you dare to make it and fortune, whatever you think it is, Fortune favors the bold. So the trick to life is to always boldly step up and dare to make your life magnificent. I'm Joseph McClendon III. I love you, and I look forward to seeing you at the top. I'm out. Thank you. Oh, stop it. <laughs>